Good evening, everybody. And uh, welcome to a rock outcrop uh, just in the lee of Todd Crag, which is uh, over there uh, above Ambleside. Ambleside is just over here and we're overlooking the beautiful Lake Windermere, <clears throat> or just known as Windermere. Now, I've been here before. Um, this location is um, iconic, I suppose you could call it, in the Lake District, um, in that there is a wall uh, just here uh, where you saw me setting up the camera, and there used to be a wooden style that went over that wall. Uh, it's now been replaced with a, a set of steps, uh, sort of stone steps sticking uh, out of the wall. But uh, when I came here before, the style was gone. There was just a gap in the wall. And I was a little bit disappointed. And I'm actually really, really chuffed that there's now something to replace it. But the scene in front of me um, is pretty and beautiful. Uh, we've got about an hour and a quarter until uh, sunset. And I'm just, I'm just up here waiting for the colour. Um, when you saw me uh, setting up in the B-roll, um, when I was looking at my phone, I was actually referring back to an image that I'd created previously um, from this particular location. I was just trying to remind myself of the composition because uh, I was actually really happy with the composition, not necessarily happy with the, the light that I got, but I was certainly very happy with the composition. So I was, you know, rather than try and reinvent it, I was using that original image as a mechanism to, you know, you know, let me work just a little bit faster and get what I'm looking for. Now, the dynamic range of the scene behind me is absolutely massive. Um, now, ordinarily, I would be reaching for my uh, neutral density filters. But just recently, I posted a video um, about some of my frustrations with the Olympus system. Um, and one of those frustrations was dynamic range, use of filters, just, just being in certain situations where the camera just didn't appear to cope very well with that situation. And I had loads and loads of really good advice, tips and suggestions in the comments. One of them was to use bracketing. Now, I'm not... I, I, software is part of the digital process. I accept it, but I hate doing it. I'd much prefer to be out here pushing the shutter and you know, letting the camera do the work. But I've bitten the bullet and I've taken a look at bracketing on the Olympus system. And it's not quite as straightforward as I thought it was going to be. So let me uh, swap and uh, show you the back of the camera and then I'll talk you through uh, why it isn't quite as straightforward as I thought it was going to be. And the light over there is absolutely chuffing gorgeous. But right, let's get behind the camera. Right, so there is my uh, scene, um, uh, all set up. If I just uh, brighten it up a little bit, um, so you can quite clearly see the stone steps just here and the wall reaching out into the distance. And then you've got Lake Windermere beyond and a little bit of sky. However, the sky is completely and totally blown out. So I've got deep shadows down here and then I've got very very bright highlights if I bring the histogram back in you can see straight away this red splodge is where the uh, sky is completely blown out now ordinarily I would be reaching for my grey grad filters right now and I would be putting them over the sky in order to uh, balance the exposure and give me a reasonable dynamic range however Let's have a quick look at bracketing. So the bracketing options, um, relatively straightforward on the Olympus. I hope you can see this okay, because the sun is quite bright behind me. So I'm in shooting menu two, and then the very first option is bracketing. If I scroll to the left, turn it on, uh, sorry, scroll to the right, and scroll to the right again, I get a number of options. I'm moving my head so that you can you can see them. And the first one is uh, auto exposure bracket. And currently I've got five frames, 0 0.7 EV selected. If I go right one more, you then get you know all sorts of other options that you can uh, select from. 
So the very top one there, that's two frames, 2F, um, 0.3 uh, EV. Uh, let's select three frames, 0.3 EV. So what that will give me is, that will give me one normal exposure, one uh, 0.3 underexposed, and one 0.3 overexposed. So let's select that. And we'll go back to the normal shooting menu. Uh, oh, no, hang on, I've done that wrong. There we go. The dangers of live, live demos. Set, okay, okay, okay. Right, okay, now auto bracketing has turned to on. Uh, what I did was I exited the menu without hitting uh, OK. So let's go back. There we go. Right. Now you can see there's a little symbol up here by my finger called BKT, bracket, and it's white, which means it's ready to shoot. So I'm manually focused, so I don't have to worry about focus. I'm going to hit the shutter, two second timer, click. Just one click, not two, one. But now BKT is green. And what's thrown me with the way in which Olympus has done the bracketing is that what you actually need to do is press the shutter again, one more time. Two second timer, click. And notice BKT is still green. It's actually waiting for that third shutter press. And now BKT has gone back to white. If we replay the images, I'm trying to hold my hand over to uh, shield it uh, and just go for info. Let's go back to the original image. So there's the original image uh, with the sky blown out. And notice no exposure, compens ex exposure compensation, naught. So that's the first image, normal exposure. Second image, 0.3. Third image, plus 0.3. The second one was minus 0.3. So it generates three images, but it generates three images using three presses of the shutter button. And when I first started playing with exposure compensation, it was driving me bonkers because I couldn't work out why it didn't just fire the shutter and the, you know, for as number of frames as I selected. And I actually had to go and find a couple of YouTube tutorials to tell me how to go about it. So that's bracketing on the Olympus. But when I'm in the heat of the moment and lights changing and blah, 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 I, I don't want to have to remember to press the shutter three times. And, you know, indeed, when I've ex experimented and played with this, I've kind of forgotten which option I selected. Was it three frames or was it five? I forgot to look at this symbol here. And I was ending up with frames underexposed, overexposed. It was, it was just a blinking nightmare because when I'm in the moment and the light is absolutely perfect and I'm fine tuning the composition, I'm not necessarily thinking about how many times have I pressed the shutter. I'm just trying to react to the moment. And I found a video by a chap called Gavin Howie or, or, or Huey. I, uh, Gavin, if, mis if I've mispronounced your name, then I do apologize massively. But Gavin um, talked through creating a custom shutter. And the way that uh, you create a custom shutter is to go into the super control menu, select the uh, shutter options. I have it on a two second delay. And down here, are um, custom options. So where are we? So there's one there, one there, and one there. So what have I got? Custom self timer, anti-shock, and then single. So if I go for custom self timer, because I'm not so bothered about anti-shock and I don't want it silent. So custom, uh, custom self timer, select uh, set, uh, settings, so you have to go info, and then you get three options, you get Number of shutter releases, so it's currently on five. If I change that to three, uh, make the timer to three frames, half a second apart, and that's whether I um, want the um, uh, autofocus to reset, which I don't. So 
That's my custom shutter. Two second timer, three frames, half a second apart and no autofocus. Excellent. Note, I'm still on BKT, so the camera is waiting to bracket. It's waiting to fire the shutter three times. Now look what happens. One, two, three. And it's done it itself this time. And if I replay the images and go back, then I have exactly the same. I have one frame that's uh, got you know, uh, no compensation applied, one at minus three and one at plus three. So great, so now I've found a way to create, um, uh, I found the auto bracket uh, function and I've managed to create a custom shutter, which means that I don't need to think about pressing the shutter three times. Now, me being the lazy person that I am, um, I, you know, I really want the camera to work at it just a little bit harder for me. And what Gavin's tutorial um, proposes is creating a custom function. So currently the camera is all set up. I've got bracketing enabled and I've got the custom shutter enabled. If I do that, you can still see custom shutter enabled. Now what Gavin says is you can actually encapsulate all of that and create a custom function, a function that you can just go back to time and time and time again, and all of this stuff will be as you want it. And the way to do that is to go to shooting menu one and then reset custom modes, select that, assign to custom mode. And what I'll do is I'll assign it to custom mode two. Um, I'm just holding my hand over the screen so that you can, you can see it. Custom mode two, and I'll set that. And then I'll go back to the menu, back, back. Right, so now if I, um, uh, switch off everything. So let's, uh, I'm trying to prove to you that this actually <laughs> does work as I say it works. So bracketing off. I'll now go back to my standard two second timer. Right, so that's my normal standard setup. Now I'm gonna have to take the camera off the tripod to do this, but on the dial, there's options here. C4, C3, C2, and C1. If I select C2 and put the camera back on the tripod, notice BKT is now white. And if I actually activate the shutter, let's see whether it takes three frames or not. Two second timer, Yeah, I like that function. Um, I've actually um, already got a custom function set up. I actually use the five frames 0.7 EV apart. Um, what that then creates, in fact, if I, if I do it now on this, uh, on this particular scene, um, um, and I may as well do it. So I have it stored as custom function one, which I've just enabled. So what um, that does is that takes five frames. Uh, one at a normal exposure. One will be uh, minus uh, three quarters of a stop. One minus one and a half stops. One plus three quarters of a stop. One plus one half of a stop. Five frames. Now, whether I use all five frames or not is my choice when I get uh, into software. But if I just skip back, uh, one, two, three, four, five. So there's, there's the end of um, my original sequence where um, exposure compensation says uh, 0.3. So there's my first of my five, uh, no exposure compensation applied, minus 1.3, minus 0.7, plus 0.7, plus 1.3, as near as damn it, a second and a half. And all of that has been selected using a custom function. Absolutely brilliant feature and one that I am going to be using here tonight over this view when the sun sets.
So as you can see from the B-roll and the images that I captured, um, <laughs> sunset didn't really happen, which is a little bit disappointing, but hey, there we go, never mind. Um, if I can find the video from um, Gavin explaining the bracketing, the custom shutter and the custom function, I'll leave a link in the description below because he'll explain it far better than I ever could. And I do apologize for the glare that was coming off the back of the camera. Um, unfortunately, in the light that I had, there was just no other way around it. So I'm going to wrap up this one uh, here. I've had a fabulous evening. I'm a little bit chilly, if I'm being perfectly honest with you, but I've had a lovely evening. It's now time to get back down off this fell uh, whilst there's still a bit of light. Last time I was up here, by the time I left, it was getting dark and it was quite sketchy finding my way back down again. I'm determined not to make that mistake again. So from a rock outcrop uh, on, on the offside of Todd Fell, uh, Todd Crag, uh, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed uh, this content, please do give it a thumbs up. Um, if you're not a subscriber, uh, please do consider subscribing. Hit the subscribe button. It's free and you can unsubscribe at any time. If you do hit the subscribe button, uh, also uh, hit the bell icon and then select all from the three options that appear. And then you'll get notified of new content, which is roughly every two weeks at 6 p.m. UK. So until the next one, stay safe, stay well. I shall see you again soon. Thank you.